Hello all, my name is Douglas Hemphill. I am one of the instructional designers. I'm joined today by my fellow instructional designer, Carrie Mosick, and our campus uh, videographer, Jason High. Uh, so we are here to talk about living education uh, using videos in Brightspace. So I think it's fairly self-explanatory to most, or sorry, fairly self-evident to most of us that videos are great. But why are they great? Uh, well, let's break this down into two different types of videos. The first video type is your self-produced videos. And... I would say that the biggest benefit of these is really increasing your instructor presence. Uh, obviously, we focus on asynchronous online learning, and that means that students generally don't have the option to meet with you. They can't run into you in the hall. They can't talk to you after class. They just don't know who you are. Uh, you are a voice behind a wall of text in most of what you do. So how do we get around that? Well, one thing we can do is course introductions. So right out of the gate, you have the opportunity in uh, your course information documents to post a video and say, hi, this is who I am. And this is what the course is going to be about. And we are extremely fortunate to have Jason High in this capacity. You can reach out to him, and mind you, he does have a busy schedule, but he will try to work with you to set up a time to do a video with you, and he will work with you to create a script. Uh, he has high-end video equipment. He has teleprompters, and it will look like a professional project at the end of the day. So if you're interested in doing a more formal presentation, I would ex uh, encourage you to reach out to him. However, you don't have to. You can do this yourself. If you just want something really quick, it is very easy with the on-campus tools like Panopto to grab your webcam and set it up to record and go to town. Now, the other type of sort of self-made video is what we would refer to as the micro lecture. So I may ask my students to read a chapter in a book or review a set of PowerPoint slides or just read several pages of lecture notes. But that, again, doesn't really give instructor presence. So what I can do is at the beginning of a module, I can do a quick introduction and just drop it in, or I can do something specific to the content. Uh, the, what you do not want to do is record a live lecture, so something you're giving for your regular course, and then present that as core content to an asynchronous audience. Uh, it's just not terribly engaging, and students will put it on play, they will lose their focus, and they'll think they listened and got knowledge until they have to do an assessment, and then they realize they didn't retain anything from that. Uh, there's been a few studies on student retention, but basically around five to 10 minutes tends to be the sweet spot. And you really don't want to go beyond 20 minutes for a micro lecture. Uh, so it's something really where I want to pick a specific point. I want to talk to my students focused on this point, And then I want to end it. That does not mean you can't have multiple micro lectures, but each individual lecture, you want to watch how long it runs. Uh, the other thing I'm going to give a shout out to is that we do have what's called a light board on campus. Uh, again, that is something you can reach out to Jason about for more details and uh, information on how to use it. But it's a really cool tool that basically lets you uh, spice up your presentations, so to speak. 
The other type of video that you're going to see mostly used are external resources. Uh, and these can come from a massive variety of sources. Uh, we now have access to LinkedIn Learning's video tool. Uh, we have uh, access to certain library resources. And of course, there is the ubiquitous YouTube links. Uh, so any of that is free game, uh, is free to put into your course, uh, though the library stuff, you'd have to go through the library. Uh, and why would we use that? Well, sometimes there are demonstrations that are available through those systems, which are simply not stuff that you can easily do on camera. And oftentimes they have higher production values than you can do. Uh, let's say you're a geologist, do you, uh, or teaching geology, do you want to talk about, uh, volcanoes for 20 minutes, or do you want to pull a segment from Nova PBS where they've got people on volcanoes, they've got digital graphics and all sorts of stuff. And as a student, which are you going to find more engaging? And just in general, one of the benefits of videos is that it can add another voice to your uh, course. And this can be either something like a voice from an expert, like I could pull up an interview from um, uh, President Carter, and that pulls in somebody with real context uh, that's different from you reciting his words, or it can be as simple as somebody explaining something in a different way. Uh, one of my own personal favorites is Khan Academy. Uh, so I might explain something about physics in my own voice, but then I can say, you know, if you didn't really get this, go check out this video, and it'll be somebody else explaining the same concepts, but maybe in a slightly different way, and the way they do it will make sense to you. So that is kind of a very condensed version on why you might want to use videos and what types of videos you might want to use. Uh, so we're going to jump into practical demonstrations. So here we are in my, uh, in one of my, uh, yeah, excuse me, Brightspace courses. Um, now just really quick, I mentioned LinkedIn videos. I want to highlight this because this is a new tool. Uh, what I do is just go to existing activities and I go find LinkedIn learning and that will open up my LTI. And once I get into that, and let me know uh, if you aren't seeing the, uh, can everybody see the pop-up? Okay. And then I can just search for whatever I want. So a popular one lately has been project management. You can see all the different resources I can pull from this, but I just want to look for videos. And now when I scroll down, I've got a whole bunch of videos and all I have to do is click add and confirm. And at the bottom of my course, if it will cooperate, I now have a LinkedIn video. That's all there is to it. Easy peasy, very cool. Uh, YouTube videos, there's kind of two ways to go about doing it. One is to go to YouTube and find your video first. Uh, let's pull some thing for again project management. Okay, here's a video I want to use. What I'm going to do is sh click the share button underneath it and get my embed code. 
And then what I can do is go to upload, create video or audio and just paste my embed code in right there. And I have no idea why that didn't copy. Thought I copied it. There we are. And it will actually pull the video information. So it'll give me the uh, code and it'll give me a preview. You'll see a little pop-up help option here, what video sites can be embedded. So it's really easy to see not only, hey, what works, but also to get ideas from this. So YouTube's right there, but hey, maybe I want to check out TED Talks or National hey, uh, Geographic. Seth? Yep. It's hard to interrupt. There's an uh, alarm going off at the library, so I think they do a so okay, whatever you need to do. Well, that's not fun. Um, so again, this is nice for uh, both seeing what can work, but also for getting ideas for what I might look for. Once I have my embed code in, I just save it. As a side note, please don't use the upload option here uh, to upload your own videos. We do have limits to what we can put on Brightspace. If you want to upload something, you should really use our Panopto interface, which I'll show next. So anyway, I'm going to say Hold on, Doug. Can you read? I didn't hear that last part. Can you say if you want to use your own letter, you should? Your own video. You want to use the Panopto interface, which I'll show you. Yeah, so okay, that's yeah. Would you show you will show us how to do that? Because that's what I do mostly. Yep. And again, if we go to the module view, you can just see, okay, it's just a link. When I click the link, I get my video embedded. I can also do this directly in uh, a file, uh, which used to be called a page is now called web page this is not uploading a file this is creating a file which opens up the text editor and you've got this thing called insert stuff and there's a, the option to insert something from youtube right there this works a little differently in that i don't use the embed code directly i research uh youtube but if i have a video that i want to use uh, I can actually just copy this string at the end, everything after the equals mark. And when I paste that in, it will pull up that video. And then I just click on the video. And now my video is inserted and I can type text around it. The other primary tool that we use on campus is Panopto. Um, why is it? Sorry, I've got a uh, Zoom bar in front of me and it keeps interrupting what I'm trying to see. So the first thing with Panopto is that you need your Panopto interface. So what I would recommend doing is on your sidebar, doing add module, and creating a folder specifically for Panopto and then hiding this from students, which again, that's just you click the eyeball and make it hidden. And you're gonna go to, again, existing activities. And in this case, you're gonna go to external tools. And if you scroll down a little bit, you've got Panopto. And what this does is open up the Panopto interface link. So you will see a link called Panopto Video OSW. If this is visible to students, you can upload uh, videos directly into Panopto, um, but it will, uh, they'll have to go through here and it will have to be in the specific course you're using. And hang on, I think I have to adjust my screen sharing settings to show you what I want to. So when I click Panopto, it will open up the LTI. 
<laughs> and the first thing it'll tell you is, well, what course are you in? And I may want to use that course or I may want to create my own course specifically if I want students to use the Panopto link to go look at the videos. However, in most cases, what I want to do is just put a video into Panopto, which is easy as hitting create. You open up the app. If you don't have the app, you can download it and you can record directly into Panopto. Or if I already have my video ready, I can just upload it. And that's a simple drag and drop interface. So, but once I've got my video in there, I need to find a video that is actually uh, belongs to me. Uh, if I hover over the video, you will see I have a couple different options. I can edit things on the fly. I can do some other fun stuff. But the big one that you want is the share option. I click that. And mostly you can ignore this. It as long as you're working in the folder attached to the course, this will take care of itself. And I'm just going to grab my embed code. And I do need to copy my embed code. And then I can just get right out of here and go back to wherever I want that video to be. And in this case, I'm going to, again, create a file, go to my embed code options, which is my source code, and just paste that embed code right in. And again, my Zoom window is in the way. I apologize. And then I can just click Save. There is my video. And now I can type around it as I did before. So I'm just going to save and close that. Oh. And now at the bottom of my Panopto folder, I have a video. Students just click on it. And the video is there. And you can do this for multiple videos. So you can paste in one, you can do one embed code, then you can go down and do the next embed code and the next embed code if you want multiple videos on one screen, or you can do them as individual files. So, uh, Jay or Carrie, do you have anything to add? Nope. I don't either, Doug, but I did learn a little bit today, so that was thank you. Awesome. Now, as always, if you need any assistance, help at oswego.edu is your place to go. Uh, the instructional designers have uh, some ability to help you within the Brightspace interface. If you have problems within Panopto itself, though, you may want to address your help request to Dan Laird. So you'd still send it to help at oswego.edu, but you would say, hey, Dan, I'm having trouble with Panopto. So that wraps up this session, and Maggie's timing is, perp is uh, perfect. Thank you.